we're going to try and do something pretty ambitious in this lesson. We're going to go through all of the treatment modalities in osteopathy that are the most high yield. If you can master this video, then you can master osteopathy relatively easier than if you don't understand the different treatment modalities. What I want you to focus on are which treatments are direct, indirect, active, and passive, and be able to compare them to one another. To start off with, what do I mean by active, passive, direct, and indirect? An active technique is one where the patient assists. So what exactly do I mean by this? In an active technique, that means that the patient will be contracting a muscle. They'll be doing some sort of instruction during the treatment. This is going to be opposed to a passive technique where the patient does not assist. So in a passive technique, the patient is going to remain still and loose during the entire treatment. Now how about direct and indirect? A direct treatment is one that directly engages the barrier. Now what do I mean by barrier? Think back to the diagnosis name. Think back to what the dysfunction can and can't do. Whatever the dysfunction cannot do is the barrier. In a direct technique, you're going to engage the barrier. And we're going to oppose that to indirect, where you will engage the freedom. Now let's give an example of both of these. Let's say that you have a patient and their somatic dysfunction diagnosis is T6 flexed, rotated right, and side bent right. Remember, you always name a somatic dysfunction by what it can do. So if you say that the patient dysfunction is T6 flexed, rotated right, side bent right, this is what they can do. So this is the freedom. This is where the patient can go easily. On the flip side of this, if this is what the patient can do, that means that the barrier is going to be the opposite. So for this patient, it's going to be T6 extended, rotated left, and side bent left. So just recognize that these are two opposites of one another. We're going to use this as the basis for comparing and contrasting all of these treatment techniques. So to start off with, we'll do muscle energy. Now muscle energy comes in two flavors. The first one is post isometric. This treatment technique is direct and it is active. It is direct because you are engaging the barrier and it is active because you are asking the patient to do something during the treatment. So for this example, for setup, for a patient whose diagnosis is T6, flex, rotated right, side bent right, you're going to engage the barrier, which is going to be T6, extended, rotated left, side bent left. When you think of post-isometric relaxation muscle energy, I want you to think of the Golgi tendon organ. Now what exactly is the Golgi tendon organ? Without getting too deep into it, suffice it to say that the Golgi tendon organ will sense muscle contraction without movement. This will send a feedback loop telling the brain to let that muscle relax so that during the treatment, the physician can elongate that muscle even further. So this technique is direct and active. So how exactly do we do it? The first step is going to be to passively bring the patient to the barrier. So the patient is going to start 
the treatment in neutral. You are going to passively push them into the barrier, which is going to be T6 extended rotated left side melt left. Once that we get there, we're going to ask the patient to actively contract isometrically into the freedom. And they are going to hold this for about three to five seconds. So again, the diagnosis, T6, flex, rotated right, side bent right. You're going to passively move the patient into the barrier, which is the opposite of the diagnosis, T6, extended, rotated left, side bent left. You are then going to position yourself in a way that allows the patient to isometrically contract into the freedom. So they're gonna contract into T6, flexed, rotated right, side bent right. And during that isometric contraction, you're going to hold them still. So they are going to isometrically contract into the freedom for three to five seconds. Once that they do this, you're going to passively move them to the new barrier. Now, because the Golgi tendon organ sensed the muscular contraction, allowing for a feedback loop to allow the muscle to relax more, that means that you can now move this dysfunctional area further into the new barrier. So further into T6 extended rotated left side bent left. Once that you get into this new position, you are then going to repeat all of these steps three to five times after which you are going to return the patient back into neutral and then you are going to rescreen. It's always important to rescreen your patient after every treatment technique. Now here's a pretty simple way of thinking about this. There are a lot of steps for muscle energy, but if you're kind of catching along with direct and active treatment, you can kind of see that the whole goal is to place the patient into the opposite of the diagnosis and then ask them to isometrically contract into the diagnosis name. So if it's easier for you to think about it in terms of that, then do that. Me personally, I write out the diagnosis first, I figure out what the barrier is, and then I fit this mold into how I'm going to perform the treatment. And once that you understand this, you can perform muscle energy on any sort of dysfunctional segment without having to think too hard about it. So I said muscle energy comes in two flavors. The first is post-isometric, and the second is reciprocal inhibition. Reciprocal inhibition is going to be direct or indirect. but it is always going to be active. So what do I mean by this? In post-isometric relaxation, you are engaging the muscle that is directly causing the dysfunction. In reciprocal inhibition, you are going to be activating the reciprocal muscle. The easiest way to think about this is going to be your biceps and your triceps your biceps being the agonist and your triceps being the antagonist. If you are wanting to treat the biceps using reciprocal inhibition muscle energy, you're going to activate the triceps. Now think about direct and indirect. All that that means is you're engaging the barrier or you're engaging the freedom. So if I'm wanting to treat the biceps using reciprocal inhibition direct I'm going to do what the muscle can't do. So you're going to directly engage the barrier, which for the biceps is going to be lengthening, which is what it cannot do if the biceps is dysfunctional. Once that you're at that barrier, then you're going to ask the patient to flex the triceps. If you want to do reciprocal inhibition, but an indirect technique, then you are going to do what the biceps can do, which is going to be shorten the muscle, which is going to be flexion.
Then you are going to ask the patient to activate the reciprocal muscle, which is the triceps, and then you're going to perform the treatment. So it sounds confusing, so let's go ahead and write that back out. If you want this to be a direct treatment, when we are talking about the biceps and triceps, the biceps are dysfunctional. You're going to engage the barrier by extending the bicep and by flexing the tricep. If you want this to be an indirect treatment, you are going to flex the bicep and flex the tricep. So in this treatment style, you're still going to flex the tricep. The only difference is the barrier that you engage, either the direct barrier by what the bicep cannot do when it is dysfunctional, or the indirect barrier, which is what the bicep can do when it's dysfunctional. So how about the next treatment style? It's going to be high velocity, low amplitude, or HVLA. This treatment style is going to be a little bit different in that it's direct and passive. So direct and passive. Now HVLA, an easy way to think about this is getting your joints popped. Whenever you think of HVLA, think of the treatment style that it involves popping. For HVLA, the first step is going to bring the patient passively into the barrier. So for our patient who has a diagnosis of T6 flex, rotated right, side bent right, you're going to passively move them into the barrier, which is T6 extended, rotated left, side bent left. Once that they're in the barrier, we're then going to ask the patient to relax, which will typically involve some sort of breathing technique. And the idea is that you want the patient to be relaxed so their muscles are not tense, so that when you attempt to perform the thrust through the barrier, you're not trying to fight against tight muscles. So ask the patient to relax. Once that they're relaxed, you're then going to perform the high velocity low amplitude thrust through the barrier. So you have the patient already at the barrier, they're relaxed, you're then going to push through the barrier, meaning that you're going to push further into extension, rotation to the left, side bending to the left. Once that this is complete, just like the end of every single technique, you are going to bring the patient back into neutral, and then rescreen. So the next treatment style is going to be facilitated positional release, or FPR. Now FPR is a little bit different in that it is a indirect technique that is passive. Now, how exactly is FPR performed? Before we get there, just remember, indirect technique. So you are engaging the freedom. You are not engaging the barrier, you're engaging the freedom. Which for our patient specifically, diagnosis T6, flex, rotated right, side bent right, this is the freedom, this is what it can do. So for FPR, the patient is originally going to be in neutral, and at that point, you're going to add an activating force. Now, what exactly do I mean by activating force? You're gonna add some sort of compression all the way down to the joint, and that's going to activate the joint. Because the dysfunction that we are treating is at T6, you're going to want to apply enough compression through the shoulders that will allow for compression at T6. 
but not any further. So enough compression for you to reach the joint. Once that you add your activating force, you are then going to passively move the patient into the freedom. So activating force, while they're in neutral, you passively move them into the freedom, which is the diagnosis, T6, flex, rotated right, side bent right. Once that you do that, you're going to release 